Hopefully you guys can hear me. I need to come a bit closer for the mic because there's waterfall over there. There's people wandering around. Uh, so getting clean audio here might be a lot harder than I thought. Can I can I duck down? You want to duck? Oh, geez, that sun is so bright on my face. I want to talk about zoom lenses. I think I found the perfect zoom lens for the M6 Mark II. Um, I did look at a, quite a few options. I looked at some EF options. I looked at some uh, at, at the is it 55 to 200 EFM lens. But what I found a lot cheaper was something I think we often overlook when we're looking at the M6 Mark II that the adapter doesn't only cover EF lenses but EFS. The advantage to the EFS range is that they are built for a crop sensor. So this is the EFS 55 to 250. Another great reason to have this lens over the 55 to 200 is that extra 50 millimeters. So it stretches a little bit further away than the EFM lens without worrying about extra crop or anything like that. It's also quite a fast lens. It goes down to an f-stop of four, uh, whereas I think it's 4.5. Don't quote me on that, on the EFM lens. But it's quite a fast lens. It takes really nice sharp pictures, has that extra reach, and it was probably about $100 cheaper than the EFM lens. So as an alternative, even though it is quite large, it does take up a bit of space with the adapter and then the lens, it's a really great lens. So I highly recommend looking into it. It's also autofocus and image stabilized. So if you are shooting B-roll with it, shooting video, it is perfect for that. If you're shooting someone at a distance and they're mic'd up with a lab or something like that, so you can actually hear them, you can get some nice, you know, quite big open shots at a distance with that zoom. Look at this, look how big that goes. Whoa! Now come a bit closer, look, look, look. So this is the lens, this is the adapter, this is the lens, so the adapter ends here, and then you've got all of that zoom. It's really good, I've been taking some great photos. But I'm just going to wander around and learn this lens and take some photos with this lens and see what we can do. Um, it does have its limits obviously, it's 55 at its shortest focal length, so that does mean I have to stand quite a way back to get some really good shots if I want to get closer to things. But uh, if we're taking photos of birds or things that are slightly out of reach, it's quite good. Uh, so I'm going to try to take a few photos with this and see how it comes out. Yeah, and just, just so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, it's not so much a review, just a quick look at, I guess. I guess it's a review. Would you call this a review? I think I made the right choice though. Let's go take some photos. Okay, we'll be up here. It's quite a nice shot. Once you're EM6, you can just tap the screen for your focus point. Let me illustrate the zoom. Hopefully you can... I'll just tap there. Hopefully you can see that. I'm not sure yet. So that is a level of zoom right in on that doorway. And if I bring it back... Oh, there we go. I can get that. This is a swing bridge, therefore it swings. Oh, that looks like a nice shot. Let's see if we can capture that. Being on a swing bridge, it's very difficult to um, get this right without a, get a slower shutter without this bouncing around, but I'm gonna try to drop that down as far as it'll let me. Breathe out, hope for the best. I love the contrast here of uh, the old buildings, the ruined buildings and the nature, the trees. Right, so I want this to work. I keep, okay, I need to disable the uh, sh flash functionality because I'm always bumping that button. 
focus, actually I'm going to focus on the outside rock, I want that nice and sharp. Oops, maybe I should try holding it like this so you guys can actually see it. There we go, look at the tree roots, see I love this because you've got the tree roots on the other side wrapped around the rocks through the doorway. I think that one's a keeper. It's hard to say, of course. Now I want to go a little bit closer and see if I can get just the tunnel and then the tree on the other side, if I can get the focus on the tree. What else can we find around here? There's that tree. I love these tree roots. They're gorgeous. Look at them. I know I'm cutting off the tree, but I just want those roots. Now, stairs. I'm not that unfit. I can manage some stairs. Oh, I, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna need some more snacks by the end of this. I'm glad I had a big breakfast. I wasn't going to, and I did. Now I'm glad I did. Oh yes, train tracks. Oh, they go that way, and they go that way. And some puddles too. Oh, those stairs really got to me in the end. Okay. Oh, I quite like this. See how those tracks just disappear into the trees? Into the wall, end of the line? I quite like the look of that. This one's going to be a bit tricky. Oh. Okay, that one was a bit tricky. I don't think I caught that on camera very well, but I think some of these will look at that. Some of these are going to look quite good. I think, I think we want to go this way along the tram line. That should take us to the top of the hill from where we were before. I'm not going to walk all the way around to the falls. There are some falls further down the track, but I'm not confident that the uh, weather's going to hold for me. There's some lovely reflections down here. I'm using the Joby against me as a tripod. So I'm just going to focus and do another one focusing. I always like when I do these shots to focus one on the reflection, one on the, on the uh, ground because I think sometimes they can look better that way. Again, like I said, the railway track with the softer. No, that doesn't really work in this case. Let's try another one like this. There we go. Oh, this is well creepy. You see the over there, the, there's a tunnel with a, a cage door, obviously keeping people safe, but it looks nice and spooky. So I'm going to try to grab that before my battery goes flat. Do one. Like this. Oh, come on camera, just a little bit more juice. No. Okay, we're back. So I have to shoot it this way. Aim and Okay, so to sprinkle a little bit of rain. Unlike last time, I've come prepared. I have a proper I haven't tried these out yet, a proper bag for putting the camera in. So I believe that goes all the way through. Slip that over. So we're just going to go there. It's only a little sprinkle, so I'm not too worried about the weather. There we go. Now I can get back to shooting without any worries about the rain. Oops. Now, oops. Okay, this is probably made up slightly. So you want just tied on the lens like that. You want it on a hood so that your lens is properly protected. Unfortunately, I don't have that luxury. Now, there's a mushroom over here that I want to capture. There he is. There's our little mushroom. So now we can just zoom in. There's the other disadvantage of this cover. Again, I'm not too worried about it. There it is. Uh, 
Let's see if we can focus a little bit better on the mushroom itself. Here we are. Nice. I think that is going to do us nicely. So I'm going to zoom that out. Throw my where's my lens cap gone? Now that's starting to sprinkle a bit more. Throw my lens cap on to protect the lens. Charge the string around there. That's basically it with the zoom lens. As you could see, not only could we zoom in on trees and things that were further away, but also zooming in on things that are quite small from a reasonable distance to get those nice macro shots like of that mushroom is perfect. Where we came into limitations was more where we we're trying to take shots of the train tracks and the lens just wasn't wide enough. We're going to have to switch to another lens to get better photos for that. But as you can see from the photos, the images, it's a great little lens. Highly recommend it. Wow, look at this. It's a pretty, pretty good lookout down there. So there we go, that concludes another episode of Roger Runs Out of Battery for his camera. Um, I need to get more batteries for the M6 Mark II. I've been here for a couple of hours now shooting, um, so yeah, ran out pretty quick. Uh, so I'm going to go charge those in the car while I have my lunch. And in the meantime, that was the EFS 55 to 250mm lens. Hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, please like below and um, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you guys very, very soon in the next video. Bye now.